Welcome to week three of Zero Energy Design. I hope you liked the second week of the course. This week we will focus on step one, reducing the energy demand of a building. But first let's have a look back, see what you have learned last week. After a brief introduction, you learned about the different climates across the world and how these should influence the design of energy efficient buildings. We went through the history of climate design and saw the principles of bioclimatic design. You watched the mini documentary about the Preta Roger house and learned its smart bioclimatic design interventions. Now let's continue into week three. The lessons of the week, this week will be the following. I'm presenting the introduction to you now. The next lesson I will show many examples of passive and smart bioclimatic design. In lesson 3.3, Eric will introduce you to thermal insulation as a means to save energy. After that, Regina will discuss technical solutions to efficiently use heating, cooling and ventilation. Lesson 3.5 is another mini documentary, this time about the office of Van Helvoort Groen Projecten, called Projecte Roble. In the lesson thereafter, I will go deeper into the design and technology of this special office building. So that is what is coming to you this week. What we will not present this week is the energy saving potential of user appliances. Of course, all together these use a lot of energy, electricity mostly. Just think about everything you see here. From left to right, the cooking stove, lighting, toaster, blender, oven, refrigerator, microwave oven, freezer, dishwasher. In the picture you cannot see the close-in boiler for hot water under the sink, the cooker and the coffee machine around the corner. And this is just the kitchen in our luxurious western world. Think also about the television, Wii player, PlayStation, video player, stereo set, computers, phones, smartphones, cameras, electric shaving devices, hair dryers, electric brushes, washing machines, dryers, vacuum cleaners, night lights, drilling machines, electric screwdrivers, sewing machines, electric bikes, stop it, stop it, stop it. There's so many appliances at home we use nowadays, it is impossible to keep track of them. Our course is mainly about the energy used for the climate system of a building. This is the domain of the designer. We won't go into user appliances and equipment because the users of a building decide on that part. Lighting of course is important, but after the optimization of daylight, which is the domain of the designer, lighting is a no-brainer. Simply use energy saving fluorescent lighting or even better LEDs. There are many high quality products for these on the market nowadays. And they save 50 to 95 percent compared to old fashioned light bulbs. For all other equipment, I just have one recommendation. Mind the energy label. Most equipment now is nowadays tested for their energy consumption, so look at the rainbow labels and pick the best option. Right? So not this G-label one, of course. Now let's have a look at the assignment of this week. It's very simple. Propose measures, passive and active strategies and solutions that help to reduce the energy demand of your building both in heating, cooling and electricity use. You can present these in drawings, sketches and in schemes, or in lists, whatever helps you best. Try to calculate or estimate how much energy these measures would save, starting from the original energy use of the building. Good luck! I hope you will enjoy this week. See you in the next lesson.